Mm. Pretty little black skin girl, pretty little diamond ring. Oh, Caribbean beauty, Caribbean cutie. Hey gems, welcome back to my channel. So if you watched my previous video about my pregnancy update, then you are most likely expecting to see this video of me talking more about what I experienced or what I am experiencing with perinatal depression. I was supposed to film this video yesterday because I filmed like four different videos yesterday and you know I was just in the mood and my spirits was much higher than today but I still want to get this out. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I was diagnosed with perinatal, well, prenatal depression. Um, I didn't even know that existed. I didn't know it was a thing. The only reason I ended up doing some research to figure out what was going on with me is because I knew what I was feeling was different than what I felt during my first pregnancy. So even though when I was pregnant with my son, um, I was sick and, you know, still going to work and, you know, I had a lot going on. I didn't feel so low. I didn't have problems thinking positive. I not once rushed through my pregnancy saying things like, I can't wait for this to be over or I can't wait to be finished being pregnant. Like I, I never rushed through my pregnancy. I always embraced every moment of it. However, with this pregnancy in the beginning, it was really hard for me to do that and I couldn't pinpoint why. And then with me feeling like that, I felt guilty would just add it to it. And this continued for a while and I kind of just kept signing it off as, oh, you're pregnant, it's just hormones, you're fine. But I just kept telling myself like, but I didn't feel like this before. Like this is, something isn't right. Like I shouldn't feel this down. I literally went through this in silence with myself. Like I didn't tell my fiance, I didn't tell any family members, I didn't tell anybody exactly what I was feeling because I thought it would come off as me complaining and I was not trying to complain at all. However, just deep down, that intuition, that gut feeling, I just knew it wasn't normal. Like, normal in terms of what I'm feeling isn't just the pregnancy hormonal symptoms. It's something deeper. So that's when I went and I did some research. I think I googled like, is it possible to be depressed while pregnant? I, I googled something like that and then the term perinatal slash prenatal depression came up. Now I didn't know like something like that exists. I'm only aware of postpartum depression which actually happens after you have the baby. So I was kind of shocked yet relieved that this was a thing. I was relieved because at least now I knew what was going on and now I can implement things to feel better. Before, I just felt like I was going crazy because I couldn't pinpoint what it was. I couldn't verbally explain to anybody what I was feeling and what I was going through. So I felt so alone, I felt so down. I was just literally at one of the lowest of lows in my life. And I know that sounds bad. Whew. I know that sounds bad, but like that's literally just how I felt at the time. Perinatal depression occurs during or after pregnancy. So that's the, that's the complete term, perinatal depression. Then it's broken up into while you're pregnant and then after you have the baby. So while you're pregnant, it's called prenatal depression and then after you have the baby, it's called postpartum depression. When I found this out, I started doing more research. I went to YouTube looking up videos to see if anybody was sharing their story. I found a few videos, not much, but I found a handful of videos I watched some of them and I was like, okay, this makes sense now. Like it was finally like making sense to me and I was able to just wrap my head around everything. So that helped a lot in itself, just finding out what, what was really going on with myself. So perinatal depression is basically a, a mood disorder that can affect women during pregnancy or after childbirth. So for me, it's during my pregnancy. 
and there's not just one thing that triggers it you can't like just pinpoint the cause and just be like voila it's fixed it's it could be a combination of things that trigger your perinatal depression and every woman may experience different symptoms some of the symptoms that i was feeling was just feeling very i remember feeling very guilty very overwhelmed um tired and fatigued and i know tiredness and fatigue comes along with regular pregnancy but this was different um i couldn't sleep at night at all like for weeks i was not getting sleep i literally would go to bed and i'm just laying there trying to go to sleep and i cannot sleep I remember one night that I actually just never went to sleep. My eyes were open. I saw the sun come up. Like, I didn't get any sleep at all. I was having trouble concentrating and getting things done that I would normally do, whether it was making my products, even recording a video, doing yoga, everything that I knew that I loved doing and would do on a daily basis. I was having a hard time bringing myself to do it. And with that, I felt like I wasn't getting anything accomplished, with them, which then added to my, me feeling down because I felt like I was just helpless, hopeless. It was just a lot of negative thoughts and energy, and I hated it. I, I wish that it was as simple as me just flicking a switch and turning it off. But no matter what I did, it just would not go away. Those, the feeling of just feeling so down and sad, it just didn't go away no matter what I did. Oh, I am trying to hold it together, y'all. I also had trouble eating. I had no appetite after a while. Like when I first found out I was pregnant, those first two weeks after, I was eating a lot. But once this feeling kicked in, like I couldn't eat, I didn't have an appetite. I would literally try and force myself to eat just, just so that I know I'm providing my baby with nutrients. Because the thing is that while feeling like this and while going through this, I felt so guilty. I felt guilty because I had a son there I needed to take care of that needed my attention. And I just didn't have the energy to do the things I would normally do. So I just, I kind of just wanted to pass the time away. I would wake up in the morning, just waiting for nighttime to come, just so that the day would be over. And that's, that's no way to live y'all. Like that is, that is depression. That is depression, <laughs> okay? So, and I've never experienced that to that extent before, never in my life. So, um, Perinatal depression can be very mild or it could be very severe. I would not consider my case severe because I've never had thoughts of harming myself or my unborn baby. So I wouldn't say I had a severe case, but I do know that what I was feeling was not normal for just pregnancy. It was something deeper. I just want, I was just so concerned the whole time about my unborn child and my son. I just felt like with me feeling like that, I'm passing a lot of negative energy to my baby. I felt like maybe I wasn't providing my baby with the, the, the nutrients it needed, even though I was taking like my prenatal and all of um, drinking my teas and stuff, like being that I didn't have an appetite and all of that, like I just felt like I was doing my body and my baby a disservice. And that added to the sadness, that added to me feeling down and then on the other hand I'm already a mother so I need to take care of my son and I felt so overwhelmed during the day because there were days that I'm home alone with my son and I'm literally just crying all day I'm literally just crying all day and I'm trying to keep him busy and keep him occupied so that he's not just watching me cry all day. And that was hard within itself. 
because even though I didn't want to cry and I wanted to stop crying, it's like I just couldn't turn it off. It just kept coming. It came to the point where like I had to talk my talk to my fiance and tell him like a few days out of the week you're gonna have to just take him with you. That's what it came down to. So you know. Eventually, like I said, when I figured out what was going on with me, we implemented certain things so that I can feel better. Before I get to that, like, I am going to insert a clip here of a video I recorded back in April. I think it was like April 17th or something of just one of those days I was having. I don't think I recorded it in with intentions of uploading it or doing anything, but I was literally scrolling through my phone yesterday and saw it and was like, I, re I rewatched it and all of those thoughts and feelings came back and I was like this 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 would give it a better breakdown or a better insight of what I was feeling in that moment so I'm going to insert that video here I am really having a rough day I think I literally spent my whole day crying so far don't mind how I look but um, this pregnancy is being very rough on me. Um, I'm finding it to be more challenging than my previous pregnancy with Josiah. I don't know. Like, I didn't come to this conclusion today, but I. When I did come to it, I I literally felt like a bad a bad mother for you saying it. But... but I do not enjoy being pregnant. Like yeah, this pregnancy was a surprise and everything, and I had no plans on being pregnant right now. But I've moved past it, like, I've accepted it, and at the end of the day, the ba a baby is a blessing. And it's not like I didn't want more children, so. Like, I accepted it, but I am having a hard time on a daily basis with all these symptoms, and it's driving me crazy. Like, I literally, some days feel like I'm just depressed and I can't do anything about it. And with that, I'm like constantly worried about the baby and, you know, if he or she is getting everything it needs. And, uh, you know, that I'm not doing anything to affect the growth and development. Because right now, I struggle with an appetite. I'm throwing up a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I have to make myself throw up just to feel better. It's, it's a lot. It's hard. Especially days when, you know, it's just me and Josiah home, which is most of the time right now is really hard on me and this morning I just I felt so overwhelmed so emotional so just defeated that I just couldn't help but to cry and I cried and I cried I cried on and off all day I'm outside now feeling Josiah because he woke up from his nap even before that like I was inside putting Josiah down for his nap and he would not go to sleep no matter what I did, he would just cry. And he usually don't, don't do that. Like, he would go to sleep when he knows it's time for a nap. But today, he just gave me a hard time. And I just sat there and cried with him. <laughs> I sat there and cried with him. Because I just, I was so tired. It's just, this pregnancy is just so different. I'm spitting again, walking around with this bottle. And I think the most annoying part is the bell slash mucus that's like literally always in my throat. And yes, 
I said it is a pregnancy symptom. I even looked it up because I was like, how do I get rid of this? Am I sick? Am I, do I have a cold? No. Just during pregnancy, your body produces more mucus, um, mucus and that could, that could end up in your throat as well. Um, I was congested, literally always hawking up trying to get rid of the mucus and it's like you hawk and more come. Like it's like a never ending cycle. The only time I and and whenever I swallow, it's like a ball just in my throat. And that makes me gag, which then makes me vomit. It's <sighs> listen. I just sometimes feel defeated. And I'm not gonna say every day is absolutely the worst. But this pregnancy as a whole so far is actually very difficult for me. I feel like it's harder than with Josiah because with Josiah, even though I had a mucus in my throat, it wasn't this severe and it didn't last so long. I just decided to get some fresh air, try and clear my mind, uh, and be strong enough to take care of my child. Literally, that's all my energy goes into right now is taking care of Josiah. No. I'm just gonna end this video. <sighs> just wanted to vent a little bit, um, cause quite frankly, like when I talk to people about what I'm feeling, yeah, they're there to listen, but like nobody really understands um, what I'm feeling. Yeah, I have friends that um, have babies, but when I talk about my symptoms, they're like, that didn't happen to me. So I just feel like nobody really understands and it makes me feel alone in that sense. But um, it is what it is. The only thing that's really keeping me through this pregnancy is knowing the joy I'm going to feel when I get to hold my baby for the first time. But everything else is just like I'm literally taking it one day at a time. And when I wake up, it's like I'm counting down the hours till I go to sleep again. Just so that time can go by as fast, as fast as possible. It's not a good way to live. And I'm, I'm just hoping that I'm not passing no negative energy to my, my baby. But it's really hard for me right now. Either shortly before or shortly after that video is when... I knew I just needed more help. How I even recorded that video, how I even found out that what I was going through was um, prenatal depression. Like I said, I went and Googled something and it came up. So after that, I called my midwife and I explained to her how I was feeling and that, you know, this is different than my first pregnancy and I'm concerned or whatever. So she did an evaluation with me asking me certain questions and giving me a scale to choose from and at the end of it she was like well you're, you're de definitely depressed at that point she gave me certain tips and tricks of things to implement on a daily basis to help me feel better for one um going outside more getting fresh air getting more sunlight exercising uh what else Making sure my vitamin D levels were up because before I found out I was pregnant, but my vitamin D level was very low, which is not surprising because ever since I started working from home, I didn't really have a reason to go out. So that's just less sun I was getting. There would, there would be days that I wouldn't even leave my house at all in terms of just walking outside. So my vitamin D levels were, were not where they should be at all. So um, that's another thing she told me I should do is try and get my vitamin D levels up. Uh, what else? She said, ask for help. Like, don't be afraid to verbally ask for help. And that's one thing I wasn't doing. I wasn't expressing that, yo, I really need help right now. And I was just keeping everything in and I was making things worse. 
So after we, well, after I spoke to my midwife, I of course spoke to my fiance and try and broke down to him what I was feeling, what I was going through. That's when we implemented certain things like him taking my son with him a few days out of the week, um, me getting more um, fresh air and going outside more and trying to be active, even if it's just taking a walk around my community. So I started doing those things and within a couple weeks, I started to have way more good days than bad days. However, I knew that's not all I needed. I knew I also needed just more help on a daily basis. So that is when um, I asked my mom, like, you think it would be possible for one of my sisters to come up? And although she wanted to send them, and mind you, at this point, I didn't tell my mother what I was going through. I didn't tell anybody except for my fiance yet that I was experiencing the prenatal depression. So I asked her without her even knowing why. And although she wanted to send them or, or they wanted to come, it just wasn't realistic or ideal for them to come. Because like I said, they all do work and I wouldn't be able to pay them while they're up there. And if they're not working, they don't get paid and they have their own responsibilities. So my mother, she, she suggested that maybe we ask my fiance's sister to come down, even though she's still in high school. You know, at that time school was, I think school was out because of the whole virus thing. And it's not like she like had a job or something. So she was like, maybe ask her instead, since you know she already lives in the States and maybe that would be easier. So I told my fiance to call his mother and ask him. And I honestly don't know how that conversation went, but for whatever reason, she said that his sister couldn't come. And she actually suggested that I send my son to them. Whew. I just remember hearing him on the phone saying, I doubt it, but I'll ask her. I don't know the details of the conversation, but I, I remember hearing that part. So when he got off the phone, he asked me. And I immediately broke down. I broke down because I was already feeling how I was feeling and it wasn't that I was trying to get rid of my son like he is what was keeping me going he was what was getting me through the day so for somebody to want to take that away from me I felt like my world was just crumbling and I was like no he can't go no he can't go I didn't even say why I just said no he can't go at that point, my fiance got a little frustrated with me because he's like, so why can't he go? Like, at least explain to me why. But at that point, I, I was already in tears. I couldn't verbally explain myself. I was just crying and saying, no, he can't go. No, he can't go. After I calmed down, I, I was able to verbally explain to him, like, why I don't want him to go. And he was like, okay, I understand. But you need help. So what is the other solution? And I just remember crying and crying and like feeling so hopeless because yes, I need help, but I don't want to send him away. Like he's still young and not only did I, I need him there with me because that boy, he's what was literally getting me through the day. He does certain things that just made me laugh randomly or put a smile on my face. Like there was no way I could send him away or there was no way that I could be away from him during this time even though I was going through a hard time. So, so that was the day that I called my mother crying, bawling my eyes out, begging, asking for someone to please come get me. <laughs> please come help me, whatever. And that's when my mother was like, okay, I'm gonna come for you. I can't stay up there, but I'm gonna come up and then um, travel back down with you so that you have help and don't have to travel by yourself. I, was, I felt so defeated that even though I didn't want to have my son away from his father either, because him and his father is like this, I, I just, I felt so defeated that I said, okay, come for me, please, okay? In two days, it took like, 
two days and she brought her plane ticket. A couple days after that, we both bought our plane ticket to fly back down to the Virgin Islands. <sighs> During that span of time of waiting to leave Florida to come here, I just continued to try and have more good days than bad, which did actually happen. I still implemented the certain things like, you know, getting more fresh air, getting more sun, making sure I take, making sure I maintain my vitamin D levels and all of that. I continued doing those things and it did help, but ultimately I needed help with my son more. And when my mom came up, it just, it was even a bigger relief off of me because, you know, she would take over she would take over sometimes and just, you know, deal with him. He loves to read and he'll bring you one book and when you finish that one book, best believe he's bringing you seven more books on his shelf. So stuff like that, she would be the one reading book after book to him, kind of just keeping him busy because he's young. He was also doing this toddler regression thing where he was just so attached to me that he always wanted me to lift him up and comfort him and he would be cranky and whiny and so just like how I was going through changes he was as well because it's a new journey for all of us he knew something was different with me he knew something was going on with me and he didn't know how to handle it either so I tried not to be too hard on him either so it was just a lot of different components Ooh, I'm losing my sunlight I need to hurry up it was just a lot of different components so it's it's kind of hard to just say one thing helped me. It was just a combination of things that helped me. Uh, and now being back home in the Virgin Islands has been even better because I'm getting way more sun. I'm outside so much more. I'm able to go to the beach, which is literally my happy place. And I just feel overall so much better. So, so, so much better. I've only had, I would say, Three down, three down days since I've been here, and I've been here going on a month so far, so that's just a, a, such a huge improvement in itself. Um, today, my spirits wasn't as high as they were yesterday, but it's not to the point where I feel just overwhelmed and low and can't get anything done and crying and all of that. I'm not, I'm not at that today, but in total i think i had like three days that i just you know would break down crying and i didn't know why exactly and i would just go outside and sit in the sun and breathe and just kind of focus my turn my attention inwards and just focus on me and that helps it really does i still find it hard to kind of be productive sometimes and I, I am always like mentally fighting with myself, trying to convince myself that it's okay to just take this downtime and focus on me and relax and, and take care of myself. But there's a lot that I also have going on. It's life. And regardless of that part of my pregnancy, it's literally it's been a it has literally been a blessing to me because it's opened up my eyes in so many different ways and I feel blessed that I am able to come to this realization and growth during this pregnancy. That's a whole nother topic in itself, really, but I've really improved and grew since I found out I'm pregnant and I think that was the universe way of pushing me beyond what I thought I can do and can be, if that makes sense. So yeah, all in all, I do feel better, but I wanted to film this video so that other women knew that they're not alone at all. And I want to build a community with women, like-minded women, like-minded mothers, like-minded parents, period that you know we're all going through a, a journey of, of growth and improvement because it's very easy to be surrounded by people and still feel alone and when you know that there's others out there that may be experiencing some of the same things you are it makes it just a little bit easier 
one thing that all of this has taught me as well is how to let go and by let go I mean of let go of expectations let go of ideas and and people and thoughts that may no longer serve you and there's a lot of that that has been going on in fact like the few people that I did reach out to and tell them what I was experiencing, I feel like they didn't even take me serious. They, didn't, they weren't there for me the way I thought they were would be. The, the two people that was really there for me in terms of people I consider my friend or, or, or sister or you know somebody close to me, I didn't expect them to be that. And the people that I expected to be that was not that. So it just, it just allowed me to let go of expectations, let go of what I think people should do or think people should treat, or how I think people should treat me and all of that. And I'm so much more at peace. This has nothing to do with no one but me. Okay, so like, I don't want anyone to like, act like I'm throwing shade or anything. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. I'm just saying that I've come to realizations that helped me feel better during this process. And I'm content with that and I'm okay with that. Uh, everybody have their own lives and have their own things they're going through. And I can't expect people to drop what they're doing and what they're going through to come to my aid. And at the time I did because I've done the same for them in the past or or know that I would have done the same for them, but it is what it is, man. Like, I could say that some of the things that I think triggered the depression is not just the surprise of the pregnancy, because like I said, I do want more children. Well, I did want more children, so the pregnancy I was able to still embrace. I think it was more so that I came into 2020 with all these plans and ideas and um i had decided that oh i'm gonna focus on my business and and grow my business and expand and launch new products and do this i signed up for literally so many events from january up until like september and i was only able to do like two of them the virus kind of canceled the rest which was to me just everything kind of came together because even the stuff that I should have been doing, I didn't have to not do it because of my pregnancy. It was more so the whole COVID-19 thing that, you know, kind of shut that down. So it just gave me more room to focus on myself and focus on my growth and think about the things that I really want to do and what is really important to me and how I really want to live my life. and. Ooh, I'm saying and a lot, but <laughs> but that was helpful. It it really gave me time to turn my attention inward, literally, and focus on myself. And I think I'm in in such a much better place now, mentally, spiritually, definitely, and emotionally. So I can't say that. Um, those changes are just the one thing that caused my depression. Another thing that really weighed heavy on me is the fact that when I found out I was pregnant again, I felt so guilty because I felt like I was cutting my son's time short. I felt like I was doing him a disservice. And I know it sounds crazy, but this is just how I felt at the time. I felt like I was doing him a disservice by bringing another baby on board and he's only one because now I have to share my attention and I have to split everything and I felt like what if I can't <laughs> you know so there, these were all these thoughts going in my head and at the same time I was potty training him um, being getting pregnant had uh, getting pregnant made me had to wean him much quicker than I had planned to uh, what else? Because my my breast was so sore. I I didn't I did continue with them. I did continue to nurse him even after I found out I was pregnant. But that only lasted a few weeks because my breasts and nipples were so sore that it was 
so painful to continue nursing him and that was a, a journey in itself just trying to wean him and and get him on 100 percent solids so like all of these changes were just happening so rapidly that it just it was it made me feel too overwhelmed anyways my son is now home i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope that you were able to take something of value from it and that even if this isn't something that you've experienced yourself it just opened your mind up to some of the things that women go through when they're pregnant and maybe gives you an idea of how to help them, you know? But I hope you enjoyed this video. I wish you all love, light, and prosperity, and you guys will see me in my next one. Peace. And you deserve it all. Oh, this is perfect. And it's the magic and everything you do. Isn't that